Okay, here is an offensive uh, representation of how I feel that the attitude of a lot of people about this demonetization thing is. Okay, it's like, I refuse to say anything unless I get paid. And you used to pay me no matter what I said, and now I demand that you pay me again no matter what I do. I should be able to flush to a toilet with turds in it, and, and people should be, you should pay me for that. Every little thing that I say, you need to pay me for. Because that's how it was. That's how it was. You can't expect me to say anything. You can't expect me to make a video and not get paid for it. My opinion is, 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 is worth money. My opinion's worth a lot of money. It's worth a lot of money. People won't look at my opinion unless I make money. But I think it's funny. I, I, I've laughed at a lot of this stuff. I looked at Thunderfoot's video and just kept laughing. I'm like, wow, dude, really? <laughs> and of course he brings Anita Sarkeesian into it again. <laughs> and he doesn't seem to realize that there are people of all all types that this is this is hitting but the ones that are just like the most furious and and just like it's censorship it's censorship if you don't pay me money for my opinions it's censorship saying the very kinds of things and putting the blame on one one tiny segment of society and then acting like they're somehow more intelligent for it or that that gives them the moral upper hand or something. And so I've, I've got to laugh at some of the people that, you know, pretty much make a living f from being an asshole. <sighs> hey, look at me. I, I, my, my character that I play uh, for money is mean, really, really mean. I'm so mean. Let me prove it. And of course, you know, people enjoy being mean. It doesn't actually help you. But you get some, you know, laughs off of it for a period of time. Something I always thought was strange is how... Uh, maybe this doesn't seem like it relates, but... You watch something like America's Funniest Home Videos or something, right? And you've got... You've got these elderly people who, I mean, they probably just got hurt and are probably going to have to go to a hospital because they had a fall. And I see it and I go, oh. But I guess the response is, <laughs> and I kind of wonder about that. Someone can get addicted to being mean. Because our society kind of buffers it out. And something that I think is a real shame is how we don't seem to see the, the reality that media shapes our views. Whether we want it to or not. When we are bombarded with something for so long, Media shapes our views. Now, in another video, I talked about how uh, the Star Trek from uh, Next Generation uh, onto a Voyager that that whole period. Um, there was there was a, you know some people could call it uh, propaganda, and maybe that's why uh, you know. Uh, PBS doesn't play the kind of programming, the awesome programming that it used to play in the 70s, the late 60s. There's a certain amount of propaganda. And that propaganda is saying, let's treat each other decently. 
Let's be tolerant. Let's try to be better people. And so I'd say that, you know, the, the Star Trek uh, Next Generation all the way to Voyager was a lot of messages in that. I mean, it was constant. It was constant. It's like, well, if we're going to depict some sort of future, then let's depict a future where we've, we've been able to evolve into being better people. You know? And that's why the new Star Trek, the movies, disappoint me so much. You know? And anything... I mean, we used to have a lot of, of programs and movies that still shove forth some of this, you know, let's be decent. And now it's... I mean, I can't... It, it, now it's just like, well, survival of the fittest seems to be the message in most of the movies now. I mean, you've got these, these, these action movies that are so over the top, it can tell some sort of, of, of a story, but it's usually just about the action scenes and... Oh, look how well that was pulled off. Oh, it brings me to the edge of the seat. Okay, great. All right. But interactions... You know, there, there was more... There was more depth in how people show that they're trying to be decent. And so, you know, games... They add to this sort of thing. And as our culture becomes more this way, media and, you know, movies and television programs and all, those things will reflect, and music as well, will reflect this change in our society. And then our society feeds on that. And then it goes back and forth and it keeps going like this, up this little ladder of this, this... Where it just it's like we're slowly losing our humanity. And I, I understand that there are there are people that are going to well, you're just a, some some uh fuddy duddy, uh hippy dippy kind of person. You know what? I'm proud to be a hippy dippy kind of person. I'm proud of that. That's not something that I should be ashamed of. I think it's really sad that, that people are made to feel like, you know, oh, well, that's a weak position. You know, if someone hits me, I'm going to hit back. Whether it's physically or, or verbally. I'll do what I can. I'm no master of the language. But how is it that we've stepped so far away from even trying to shove forth an idea of us being better people. There's a lot of, I have my tribe and fuck everyone else. And truth be told, when you have the left acting like that, there's something amiss. There's something not right. And the left, when they do this, are terrible at it. Terrible. That kind of territory is normally something that's been on the right. And when the left is doing it, man, it's nasty. And I think some of that is what we see in what people are labeling as the SJWs. A phenomenon that I see on the right a lot is uh, intolerance somehow is supposed to become tolerance if they make fun of the person for uh, what they are. Well, that's not intolerance. That's just me being blunt. You know, phrases like uh, black people should commis commit less crimes. Um, gay people should, uh, should uh, keep that stuff at home. Those stupid women drivers. One that we don't see much anymore is the, uh, the, the one that used to, to exist. Uh, even Tom Like has gotten involved in some of that for a little bit. You know, what's, what's with all these Asian Ching Chong Chang people? All right. <laughs> and lots and lots and lots of hatred towards those who barely speak English. 
You know, we don't have an official language here, but people are like, well, well, there, there, there should be. Well, then push forth for there to be an official language and see, you know, see what you can do. If you really find it important, then do something about it. But no, you'd rather make fun of the people who don't speak English because that's the method. It's always the method. Here in the United States, in, in, since my lifetime, in, in, in my lifetime, it's always been the right ends up being the ones that are just very tribal. You know, let's, let's make fun of people for not being what we are. The left tries to, you know, retaliate against that kind of mindset because it's like, well, that is the mindset of intolerance. So now the answer is those on the left are supposed to be tolerant of intolerance. And so the left is just like, well, how do we fight this? What are we supposed to do? And so some of the people on the left are like, well, let's get more militant, which it doesn't help. It causes a hell of a lot more problems than it solves. And that's what we're seeing with a lot of these SJWs out there. Well, check your privilege. You're a white male. You know, I mean, uh, it's when people, you start to see people throwing these pejoratives out. How do people fight this this continued element of a push against any sort of progress we can have. I won't tolerate you saying that you're a woman. No, I won't tolerate that. I don't care if it doesn't hurt me or anyone else. Um, I don't think you should be able to go into that bathroom. No matter if you've been living your life as, as that sex for the, your, uh, most of your life, I, I, I don't care. You're going to hurt someone because you live a lifestyle that I, that I don't understand and it makes me upset and I'm confused and therefore I can't accept you as a person, as a human being because because of this. It just seems to be what it's about. And it's so frustrating sometimes to try to, to talk to someone about the things that they're kind of bigoted about. How do you address it? And so those that, those on, on, on that far left progressive side, as they become more militant, they also grow a thicker skin. And it's the act of them growing a thicker skin that's why they're acting in the way that you can't stand. Isn't that funny? And then here it is, you're telling people to grow a thicker skin when what really, you know, if, if you really had any valid points, if you actually had some valid points in your intolerance, then maybe them being a little vulnerable might show them something. But generally, there's, there, there is no... There is no positive endgame to intolerance. And if you expect others to be tolerant of intolerance, go fuck yourself. Seriously. The left is intolerant of our intolerance, and they're calling us names for calling them names. <laughs> That's not fair. I've been I I've I've had that attitude about uh, about some of the religious right, you know, before all this SJW, 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 SJW before that started becoming this this big conversation and and, and feminism is cancer, before that became into came into place, we could see the intolerance of the religious right. We we saw it, we talked about it, we tried to tackle it, we tried to do things about it, and we moved on to attacking everyone who promotes acceptance and tolerance and seem to have forgotten what being intolerant means. I mean, once we become intolerant of the promotion of tolerance, there's a problem. And so many of the people that are fighting against the, the SJWs or they, they say they're anti-SJW, even though they don't even know what, what it even means anymore, and hardly anyone does, you've become the very thing that we used to be fighting against. 
when you become an intolerant scumbags who you it's it's the same goddamn thing you know in treating some of the people because oh well you think you you think trans people should be accepted so i'm going to treat you the same way a nasty christian would come up to a gay person and saying you're going to burn in hell for eternity you've become those people you have become those people the same shit it's the same shit and this is why it's so goddamn frustrating and again this is why we have these sjw's saying this this some people have just had it and they're they're screaming and they're they're just like how can you not see what you're doing anita sarkeesian would never have been popular not not like not like she became if it wasn't for all these people all these people showing how mad and angry it makes them because she's saying negative things about games in ways that aren't that we don't consider a valid criticism <laughs> if they talk about the games negatively they'll take them away and all these people fucking whining and being all goddamn I mean, you're complaining about about uh, some of you misogynists out there will complain about women being all emotional. And look how these these people get about their fucking games. There's not even an actual threat on any of this shit. But here you are. Oh, they're gonna take away my games. I'm gonna I'm gonna react. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I have to say bad things about about Anita Sarkeesian. I have to say really really bad things about her. And you know what? That's why she's famous. That's exactly why she's famous. And we have grown men, grown women, reacting to her like she's cutting off your fucking dick or clit. I mean, holy shit. Yeah, if, 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 if swarms of people act like that, she can point, point her finger and say, look what we're up against. And really, look what she's up against. A bunch of people going, oh, they're going to take away my games. <laughs> She's a con artist. Whatever. You know, she has she has something she's saying. I mean, are we going to start going after people like Anthony Robbins next? Tries to give talks about, uh, 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 you know, b positivity. Well, well, you know, that's just a scam. You need to grow a thicker skin. That's what life's about. Grow a thicker skin and treat people like shit. <laughs> I mean, that's that's basically what it's what the advice is. And then you're upset when those that are progressives do that. They're taking your advice, and you're mad at them for taking your advice. This is how stupid this is. I don't know what you. I mean. And so many people have have grasped onto this. People that, that still, well, I'm on the left, but why have you grasped onto this? This doesn't represent what would be on the left. Unless it's this thing where we're trying to swap around what is left and right, I don't know. I mean, it was Democrats and Republicans were kind of swapped in the past. Is that the attempt? Maybe we'll just kind of flip it around again, right? No, I don't think so. But the truth is, some of you are just mad because some people want change. And you don't like change. You don't want there to be change. You'll pretend that you want there to be change, but then when someone asks you how you want that to come into place and what do you want to change, um, out comes the names. The whole thing is just sad. You know, basically, the left is the slave or the, the the little boy you kick or the little girl you kick and the right is uh, uh, conquer, divide the ones who kick the little boy and say buck up, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and get a thicker skin there's no such thing as pain, it's all in your mind so buck up life is hard, so buck up and make it harder for others that's the thing that you do that's our tradition and anyone who says anything bad about that is a whiny, commie, regressive, SJW retard. It's it's all about being intimidating and domineering and, and all of that. And the toxic side of masculinity uh, just exemplified and put to extremes. It just seems to be the 
the general, the, the, that political attitude of the right. And when the left takes any of those types of political attitudes, the right freaks out. And I think that's because so many on the right actually know what their own intentions are, but they never talk about them. And if they see the left even tilting on any of it, they're going to think, oh shit, they're going to start to do to us what we do to them. What are you to do? We have people that are saying that they're on the left, but they don't represent the left at all. So what is that? Is it the, uh, is it neoliberalism? I'm a liberal. I'm a neoliberal. Is neoliberal. So, so I'm like way on the right. Hey, check me out. <laughs> it has the word liberal in it, so therefore I'm a liberal. Or, or oh, I'm a classical liberal. Where intolerance is it, it, intolerance is still number one. So you know, liberalism. So again, to those of you who think that people on the left should just tolerate intolerance this is what I have to say to you when you're acting just like just like in the 90s some of the nastier Christians out there the way they treated gay people and in the 80s you want to act just like that but about you know other demographics and you'll use some sort of bullshit excuse about, oh, it, well, all people are important. Let's not focus on any groups at all because all people are important and do all that fucking virtue signaling. So you can pretend you're on the left. I want, but I want good things to happen. Okay, how? By wanting them to happen. Great, let's, let's, uh, let's pray for, for France. Just put your hands together and pray, and uh, that'll help. You want to make things better by saying you want to make things better. That's so nice. And violence is wrong. And you want the world to be a better place. So, you know, click, uh, click like on this Facebook post, and uh, that'll help cure cancer. You think it's supposed to be so easy. To those who so, so much consider themselves anti-SJWs and anti-feminists. What do you think would happen if there was nobody left to try to make us more tolerant and accepting of other people? What do you think would happen if those people just kind of dropped off the face of the planet? Do you revel in some sort of a, a, a anarcho-capitalist libertarian utopia where everyone always has good intentions? You know, where you believe in the good of people, even if what's in front of you doesn't reflect that. And if it doesn't reflect that, then they should be punished. Don't do anything to try to make, to actually try to make the world a better place. Don't make life better for anyone. Just make your nice little statements and uh, do the equivalent of, of, I'll pray for you. Do your little equivalent of that in your uh, uh, alt-right, neoliberal, uh, uh, atheist, uh, I don't care about anyone kind of mindset. Guess it's not I, I don't care about anyone. It's uh, I care about, I, I only care about white people that are male and cisgender. Because anyone else trying to talk about anything is, uh, they're going to take away my rights somehow by some route that I'm not willing to explain. But they're going to take away my rights. They're going to take away my rights because they, they tried to point out a problem in my demographic. That means they're going to take away my rights. How do you, how do you deal with that? How, how, do you, how do you respond to people that are like that? I mean, it's like people that are, that are so... They're, they're just so out of touch with how things are, how people are, what psychology is, any of that stuff. They're so far out of touch. How do you react to that? Well, some people will become more tribal. And again, that's what a lot of this SJW stuff, that people are being called SJWs, you know, whatever SJW even fucking means, that's where some of the, the meaner people on that, from that whole crowd, come from. Again, you know, thicker skin, grow a thicker skin, and then make fun of them for having a thicker skin. Aren't, aren't you so proud of yourself? 
When people do what you say, then you make fun of them for doing what you say. Isn't that nice? Isn't that, isn't that neat how that works? See, you, see, this is why I mentioned earlier of, of well, you know, what would happen if they, they just left the face of the planet? That seems to be kind of what you want, want those on the left to do. Just, you know, intimidate them so they never say anything anymore. And, oh, great, now there's nobody complaining and the world will be better because nobody's complaining. Because, you know, you, you have everything just fine. You don't, you don't have very many issues. Who cares about any minorities or, or anyone going through anything else? Who cares about them? Um, let's average things out because there's still more of us and we can minimize anything that you're trying to say because trying to make the world a better place is for God and belief systems and survival of the fittest. Except for the pain of white people having to listen to other demographics describe the things that they're going through. Because freedom of speech and uh, anti-censorship and, uh, and uh, we're all people because virtue signaling and, uh, you know, all people matter or some matter or antimatter, or matter matter, or mattress, mattresses.